I would like to thank all of our speakers who have been thought-provoking, vulnerable and solution-oriented. And it's been apparent that some key themes have come through. Caring for others shouldn't come at the expense of caring for your own physical, mental, spiritual and social well-being. Poor physician health and well-being and physician suicide is an epidemic and we need both lead and lag indicators so we can recognise and reverse it. And Professor Maureen Dollard spoke during the Ferguson Glass oration immediately prior about psychosocial culture. Individual and systemic initiatives are required to walk the talk and truly value our doctors, not just because we provide patient care, not just because we might advance scientific understanding of health and wellbeing, but primarily because it's actually the right thing to do, to care for people, to provide safe and healthy workplaces, to be kind and compassionate, to be connected, to support good work, to allow doctors to be at their best, our exceptional bests. What is the most important thing in the world? Hea tangata, hea tangata, hea tangata. It is the people, it is the people, it is the people. If this session has provoked strong emotions for you, then please talk to somebody. It could be a colleague, friend, family member, mentor, doctor's health service, your GP, your new GP if you don't have a GP, a counsellor or a psychologist. And as a, an occupational physician, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that there are friendly occupational physicians in your area who would love to support you if you have a condition impacted by your career or that impacts on your ability to work to support you in gaining optimal health and to help ensure the safety of yourself and the safety of others. Don't forget you can speak to our EAP provider Converge International and the numbers are on the screen and on our website. I hope that this has been um, encouraging to you to see the importance and the work that is being done in this area and that it has given you a moment to pause and reflect on yourself and to have some practical steps that you can take. I'd like to ask um, the speakers to stand and take a bow. Um, so if you can just come up. And if the audience could please show your whakamiha and aroha, your appreciation and your love. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. <laughs> oh, thank you, team. That was fantastic. There are a few people I'd like to, to thank. Um, George, George, do you want to bring the Murray Health Committee up? And uh, Jeff, do you want to bring the New Zealand Committee up? And I, I'd also like to get the college staff onto the stage as well. Come on, college staff. You know who you are. Come on. Come on. Yes, here you come, Andrea. Brilliant. Come on up. Come on up. Thank you, Duane. Oh, yes. Come on up. <clears throat> come here, George. Yeah, coming up to the stage. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, actually, before you show your appreciation for these amazing people, um, jo George, do you think we should do it? We should. Now's the time, eh? Now's the yeah, time. Yeah, now's the time. Now's the time. Now's the time. Appreciation for these amazing yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Um, in... in celebration of the Māori tikanga that we've included in this Congress, we'd, we'd like to, to just, we'd like you to join us in singing a waiata. It's one that you've heard several times through the Congress. Um, please give it a go. Um, we'll put up the words now. It's called Te Aroha. Um, it means love, peace, love, faith, peace, be, be with us all. Um, and it's very fitting at this point in the proceedings. So we're going we're gonna to go the, through the verses three times. And George, you can hit the note for us. Me that's hitting the note, eh? Yeah. Let's go. go te, go. Te, <coughs> te, 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 Te aroha, te whakapono, me te rangi 
마리에 차초 차초에 Okay, you lot can skedaddle off the stage. Yeah, off you go. Go on, go on. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm now going to ask uh, Professor Mark Lane, president of the college, uh, just to deliver his closing speech. I'm then going to say a few words in closing, and then we're going to finish the proceedings completely with a karakia, a traditional Maori prayer. Thanks very much, David. Um, I'm going to actually cut this down to about a page or even less. Uh, fellows, the Royal members of the Royal Australasian College of Physicians, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, e hoa e mihi ki tena okotu, friends, greetings to you all. Te kanga Māori, the Māori way of doing things, has been uh, a theme of this conference and uh, while we have focused on a wide variety of thought-provoking issues, that theme has flowed uh, through the whole of Congress. The more we understand the Māori way of doing things, or the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander way of doing things, we start to understand and ask questions about why. Why are Indigenous children more likely to be malnourished? Why is fam this family living in substandard accommodation? Why are asylum seekers being treated like criminals? Why do we invest money in heroic interventions at the end of life when intervention at early life could make so much difference? Important questions that we've asked at this uh, Congress. And we must keep on asking difficult questions. I hope this Congress has broadened your thinking and it's certainly broadened mine. There's a line in the speech that says, what's my favorite moment at Congress? And it's actually quite hard for me to think of one because there's been many. But I have to say that uh, the speech by Sir Mason Jury is uh, going to be probably my high point. I need to thank the people who've made this Congress possible. Uh, the program committee led by David Beaumont, Dr. Judy Ballant, uh, Nick Buckmaster, Ian Cameron, Stephen Clark, Margie Denchen, John Eastwood, Alistair MacDonald, Phoebe Stewart, Nicholas Wood, the Paediatrics and Child Health Program for the work they've done, and to thank each and every one of you for coming, attending, and contributing. I look forward to seeing you all at Congress in 2020. Nga tō roro, nga taku roro, kia ora ai te iwi. Nga rera tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kia kiti ano a tere tau with your food basket and my food basket, the people will thrive. Therefore, greetings to you all, and I'll see you next year. Thank you, Mark. Um, we're just coming to the end now. I just, um, I'd like to just uh, point out that it's n no coincidence that the first speaker of that last closing plenary um, has a surname Beaumont. Uh, yes, Matt is my son. I'm a, a very proud dad. Uh, also on the front row is my daughter, Emma. Um, it's fabulous to, to have them here today. Um, the, the other thing I'm, I'm proud of is our college, and um, I'm very happy to, to be able to, to serve the college. Um, I've got to say, um, it's, this Congress has been two years in the making. Um, last year in Sydney was kind of a rehearsal, um, not only for myself, but also in working with the team. And I really want to stress that the strength of our colleagues, our colleagues, college, is in the way that the members work with the staff. I've had an amazing team of college staff pulling all of this together and I would like specifically to thank Kate Moore and her team, um, particularly 
Andrea, Sky, Lucy, Alicia. Um, Sky um, couldn't be with us because she's in the latest stages of pregnancy and not allowed to, to fly, but um, she needs a special mention. She's been fantastic. Um, Kate, I'm really sorry to do this, but um, a number of your colleagues in the, the college staff and a number of our members have pointed out to me um, that they've heard that you're leaving the college. You've been in charge of the operations of Congress now for five years um, and um, have done an amazing job and they wanted me to say to you how sad they are that you're leaving and the massive amount of organizational knowledge that you take with you. So please join me in just saying thank you and farewell to Kate Moore. There is so much I could say about this Congress. Um, impacting health along the life course. For me, the thrilling bit has been the fact that just about every speaker referenced health along the life course. It's been a theme that has absolutely got threaded through the whole of Congress. But I do also want to, to draw your attention to the sub-theme that I introduced in my welcome speech, which is core tato tato, we are one. Um, and for me, that has also resonated throughout con Congress, um, particularly the relationship we have with our patients and the fact that we're actually one with our patients. Uh, for me, the take-home message from the Medically Unexplained Symptoms session yesterday was that when we get these incredibly complex patients who are often very angry, who feel they've been let down by the healthcare system, there is only two things that we need to do. The first one is to listen empathetically. They need to be heard. And the second is to say, what you're going through is real. You have a real illness. Whatever we believe about the underlying causes, their suffering is absolutely real. They need to know that you've heard that. Um, the other thing is this weird concept of doctors as people. And I actually, about three or four years ago now, I actually Googled that expression. And there is so little out there on this, this extreme concept of doctors as people. Interestingly, top of the list came this Dr. Sam Hazeldean. And, and, and Sam absolutely has been a firm advocate for doctors as people. But there's another one, which was a blog. And this guy said, I went to my, uh, went to my doctor yesterday. And, um, and, and as I was explaining my, my problems to him, he, he, he looked a bit distracted. And, uh, and I said, um, are, you, are you all right, doctor? And he said, uh, actually, I'm going through a bit of a tough time at the moment. And, and he said, that was the first time, strange as it may seem, that was the first time that I'd realized that doctors are people. And, and I think it's really important, and there's so many messages in this last session, that we are people, and we need to acknowledge our humanity. Um, and we need to show compassion for our patients and ourselves. I have a personal message for the board of the RACP. The membership needs to heal. We need to be enabled to show compassion and humanity to each other. We need to remember we are one. We, the membership, ask you to provide the leadership to do this. Mark, I have every faith that you can lead this, but we've got to change. We've got to become one. I hope you agree with me. Thank you. I think it's appropriate that I finish with reference to the Fringe experience. Um, cardiologist Dr. Madhav Menon sang My Way. Don't worry, I'm not going to start crooning. But now, the end is near. And so I face the final curtain. I've had my turn, and it's time for me to hand on the baton. I'm looking forward to announcing my successor as Congress Lead Fellow. Um, we know who it is, we've just got to go through the formalities. Um, but if there is one takeaway message I would want you to have from this Congress, from me,
personally from me. It is a con concept I asked you to consider in my welcome address. And that is that in every healthcare interaction, there is a person with their own life story being treated by a person with their own life story. Remember, it's our life story. Thank you. I did it my way. I would like to welcome to the stage the final act of Congress, Dr. Danny DeLore, to lead us in a karakia. Namahi mai ho, mai aho kia koe a David mo tō mahi o tēne wānanga. Namahi a kia koutou. Hei karakia whakamūtonga. Unuhia, unuhia. Unuhia ki te uru tapanui a tāne. Kia wātia, kia māma, te hina naro, te tinana, te nākau, te wairua i te aratakatū. Koe rā e rongo, whakairi aki. Kia wātia, kia wātia, ai rā, kua wātia, whanō, whanō, haramai te toki, humie, huie, taikie. Thank you, Danny. Love, faith, peace, be amongst us all, safe travel. In this rapidly changing world, Congress equips you to deliver healthcare, provide leadership and respond to need. Join us in Melbourne in May 2020. Be part of something bigger, contribute to the conversation. Congress 2020 will broaden your horizons, challenge your thinking and inform your practice. We will look at a range of topics, exploring how our profession is transforming. How do we respond to society's biggest challenges? How will we work with our Indigenous communities to improve their health outcomes? Our climate is changing. How can we respond and help mitigate the risks? Our community is ageing and living longer with chronic disease. Big data and emerging technologies are driving change. How will our profession prepare for the future? Can we learn new ways of thinking, being and doing? How do we work with multidisciplinary teams? Our patients are more knowledgeable. How do we respond to the empowered patient? Just because we can, does it mean we should? These are just some of the things you will discover at Congress 2020. This is your opportunity to come together as specialists, celebrate our diverse membership, engage with your peers and contribute to the generation of new ideas. RACP Congress 2020. We look forward to seeing you in...